Mr. Hevel, you have a calorimetry experiment for us today? We do, Mr. Moore. We have calorimetry galore here. Absolutely. So, what we're doing here is popping up calorimetry and everybody's favorite, Hess's Law. And here's what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to determine the enthalpy of formation for solid magnesium oxide. That's your goal. So, there's actually three different reactions that you're going to combine using Hess's Law to calculate that enthalpy of formation for MgO. And it's important to remember how this is defined. Enthalpy of formation has a very specific definition. So you have to think about that definition when you're trying to come up with this equation. So yes, notice we're not giving you what the chemical equation, the target equation for our I'm Hess's Law solution. You've got to come up with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about the definition, and, and you can mm -hmm. see what, what that equation is going to be. You're trying to find the change in enthalpy for this process. Okay. okay. Now, to do that, we're going to run two different chemical reactions experimentally using coffee cup calorimetry. And then you'll have to add in a third equation that is the formation of liquid water. Now, this one isn't experimental. You're just going to basically look that up. Okay? So here are our two reactions. Here's what we're mixing together. One reaction is solid magnesium metal with hydrochloric acid. It's going to react and make magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Our other reaction is solid magnesium oxide. Again, reacting with HCl. Again, makes MgCl2, but water in that case. Now, you're going to have to figure out the net ionic equation. We gave you the molecular equation. You're need, you'll need the net ionic. Okay? And, hopefully you can read my blue writing down here, you're going to pick one of these reactions to be the basis of your particulate drawing. Okay, just one of these for your particulate drawing, whichever one you like the best. Okay. okay, so yep, we have these two chemical equations. Those are experimental ones. This one, you have to write the equation, come up with a delta H just from the table. Right. right. So Those are your three given delta, equations, yep. yep. Coffee cup calorimetry process will get you the delta H value for these two. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now in the end, um, what you're going to do is figure out what's your percent error between the experimental value and the theoretical value for the enthalpy of formation of magnesium oxide. So over here, I don't know if you've dealt with percent error before. <clears throat> percent error is the absolute value of your theoretical value minus experimental value over the theoretical value times 100. You probably have used that before but we Probably. wanted to just make sure you have it. Exactly. Okay, and realize that you can look up the theoretical value for the enthalpy of formation of MGL. Mm -hmm. Wow, you have some lab equipment out. Uh, we do. We do, Mr. Moore. We're, we're ready to do the experimental part of this. Um, so again, remember there's two reactions we're going to run here. They both involve one molar hydrochloric acid. Yep. Now I wrote it this way, but think of it as 1.00 molarity. Mm -hmm. Right? There's at least three sig figs there. And what we're going to do is use 50 milliliters of that HCl solution. Uh, here's our coffee cup calorimeter. Uh, in Troy, we bear, you know, we always use the best possible equipment for you guys so that looks like fabulous lab yeah, equipment mr yeah. and not we're not using just one cup of course we're nesting them together for two um i have this tremendously precision made lid that fits over the top um, remember coffee cup calorimetry is all about looking at what happens in the cup we're trying to prevent heat flow from 
in the surroundings influencing what's in the cup. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what this is for. And uh, we have a thermometer. Uh, I must point out this is Mr. Moore's favorite thermometer <laughs> because it has blue spirit in it. I have to tell you, I was looking for that blue thermometer this morning. <laughs> I took it out. Were you really? I was. I took it out because I wanted to make a joke about it. See, it's his favorite thermometer. <laughs> So realize these thermometers uh, go up in one milliliter increment, or one milliliter, one degree Celsius increments. Yeah, I'm having trouble. Once again, I, you know my camera skills. I'm trying oh. to focus on, no, just keep it still. I'll see if I can, so I just want you to see that they're in full, oh, there it is, one degree increments. So when we're measuring the temperature, we want to the tenth place. Yep. Okay. And the cylinder we're using, um, goes up in one milliliter increments. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to measure out the HCL first. 50 milliliters worth. Let's try to be as close as we can here. Okay. heard it before. Yeah, I'm whiny. <laughs> now we'll take that. How about uh, that meniscus right on the line? What are you going to call that though? How many sig figs does that graduated cylinder give you? Yeah. I'll leave that to you. Milliliter. Yep. Graduated to the whole milliliter. Uh, yeah, whole milliliter, right? Yeah. So what do you report the volume as? Okay, that's mm -hmm. good. So we're going to dump it in our Tech Kale Rimeter. Mm -hmm. That does look like precision lab equipment, yeah, Mr. Havel. I'm impressed. Is. I'm telling you. There will be our initial temperature. Okay, I'm going to rotate this just a little bit so we can get the mark above the. Oh, man, that's good. Okay, initial temperature. Okay. Now our first reaction is adding magnesium metal. So we're going to need to... Yeah, this is reaction number one, magnesium metal with okay. HCl. So let's get the mass of the magnesium. I've got a, a number of pieces here, so let me get the mass for you. Now, um, when you're doing your calculations, remember limiting reagents important. Whatever's oh, yeah. limiting, when it runs out, that's when the heat flow stops. So you're going to have to decide or calculate who your limiting reagent is. Okay, so are you ready? Oh, we're ready. Here we go. Boom, easy again. Do some gentle stirring. Distribute the heat. Well, if they can hear the physics. Now, you know what we can see? I just caught a little bit of uh, vapor coming up out. Oh, look at that. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Here's, here's Mr. Hevel struggling now to breathe. You get a breath of hydrogen, and it is not pleasant. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate, students, you can't be here with us to uh, get that experience on your own. Uh, but yeah, hydrogen will, it, it, it's just yeah. 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 Still yeah. Some, still some Somebody was asking for it, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we won't do that in the next trials, will we? No. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the thermometer from the camera. We have quite a temperature change. Yeah, all we can, yeah. All we can do is sit back and wait until the until the temperature stops changing. Here. I think all the magnesium is gone. Okay. I, you know, I've seen it in the high thirties for a little bit now. It's rotated. Can I go for you?
there you go. And I think that temperature is pretty well stabilized. Stabilized. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we've got our data from the first trial. Okay, after one of us uh, dumped out the first trial of the magnesium oxide HCl mixture, we're doing a reset on that one. And so here is uh, reaction two with magnesium oxide and hydrochloric acid. We have an initial temperature. Yeah, this is where I went into my trouble last time was I tried to rotate the thermometer and uh, bumped it and knocked it over. You can see the, uh, no, 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 I think the students were okay with that. See it? Okay. And by the way, that uh, same volume for uh, trial two it, yeah. is the same as it was in trial one. Using 50 milliliters. Both yep. Times. Okay, I'm just where I have the magnesium oxide uh, weighed out. All right. This reaction is not as dramatic, is it? We don't have the hydrogen gas generated. It, um, everything pretty much just stays in the cups. What do you see happening there? Is most of the solid all dissolved away? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, it's a little hard to tell. It is hard to tell, yeah. But we're looking for the temperature to stop changing. Looks like it was still going up, but I think it has uh, stopped going up. All right, final temperature. Yep. Now, one final thing. I know this is a point of confusion every year. The reaction we, up on the board we wrote, we we're adding aqueous HCl. Realize that that hydrochloric acid solution is almost all water. There's really very little HCl there. So, you know, when you're using the MCAT equation to calculate heat, you can treat the mass of the, the water in here just as, as 50 grams, right? It's just, just think of it as pure water with essentially just a little bit of HCl. Yep, good thinking. Okay, what is the heat of formation of magnesium oxide? Yep. Good luck. Good luck.